Hello, this is Craig Mertens. I am the general manager at Graphics Flow. Welcome to the webcast today. Um, we are going to be doing an overview of the Graphics Flow technology. I'm going to probably the best way to do that to showcase the technology is actually go in the application and walk you through it. And that's what we're going to do right now. So I'm going to actually stop my uh, video sharing. It's nice saying hi here. We're broadcasting from um, Scottsdale, Arizona, but I'm going to go ahead and stop the video of me and then we're going to focus on the screen share. So what you're seeing right now, you're currently seeing the Graphics Flow application. The Graphics Flow application is a web-based application. So what's required in order to use Graphics Flow is a web browser and an internet connection. So that means the technology can work on a Mac computer, can work on a Windows computer, can work on Android, iPhone, Android tablet, iPad, any device that has a, the ability to communicate with a web browser and the internet. And so in the graphics flow application, what you're gonna see on the left-hand side here is a control panel that's gonna show the main functionality of the software. And so when you first sign up for a graphics flow account, the, the very first thing you're gonna do is set up your team settings. I'll get to that in a little bit, but I wanna go through the primary functionality of the software. The first thing you're gonna see over here is my art. Many of our customers use cloud-based um, backup solutions, um, digital asset management software. You know, typical software programs that people are gonna be using are gonna be Google Drive, people who use Dropbox, uh, folks who use iCloud. And one of the challenges with these functionalities of these cloud-based storage systems is they're not industry specific. And as a result, they don't let you save production data. They don't allow you to uh, have image previews of common graphics formats. So when we create folders or upload files to graphics flow in the my art function, not only are we enabled to create, you know, all the production data to output the file um, or to share it within our sales department, design department, our production department, but we can also see the files. And I'll show you kind of an example of that. I created a folder and I uploaded a variety of graphics file formats just so you can see what I'm talking about um, right here. This is an SVG file. Here's a PNG file. Here is a Photoshop PSD file. Here is a PDF file, um, EPS file. Here's a, a PNG file of an embroidery rendering. Here is a embroidery format known as DST, a common embroidery format, a JPEG file. Here's a CorelDRAW file, and here's an Adobe Illustrator file. Uh, one of our claims to fame is we're the only, um, and Corel confirmed this, that we're the only cloud-based solution that can preview CDR files. So if you're a CorelDRAW user, you can preview your CDR files. If you're an Illustrator user, you can preview your Adobe Illustrator files. And it's not just this little thumbnail that you're seeing here. If I click on that, I can see a full screen image of that image. And you'll notice that checkerboard pack, um, pattern there is indicating that's transparent. That background is transparent. And I, I can actually go in and change the background color. Um, once I've gone into the, the product details within Graphics Flow, there's quite a bit of flexibility I have with this file. And one of the things that I can do is I can assign the production method to this file. There is a, a notes field where I can add any of the production notes that my design department or sales department or production department is going to need in order to process the file. I can put in imprint dimensions. I could add Pantone colors. Um, thread colors, any of the production data needed to run with this file. And then from here, anyone within the organization that is a team member and has a login can simply go in and download the artwork. Uh, very simple um, cloud-based storage, um, download the artwork and begin the editing of the file in the graphics program of your choice. Now we just released a new functionality within graphics flow, which is called art tags. And what art tags allows us to do is assign various tags to a file so that we can easily search our own content and we can apply tags to individual art files or we can do that collectively through bulk tagging. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a tag here. I'm gonna add a tag Panther. And so once we add that tag, we're gonna add it so it's available in the future in the dropdown list. And then I'm gonna add another tag here, mascot. So if I wanna go and pull up any of my mascot designs, now I can simply do a search by Panther or by mascot and easily locate that design. Now, if it was a specific school, I could also put the name of the school here. I can go back and delete the tags, edit the tags. I have a tag manager 
here. So if I want to go and edit the spelling of a tag, uh, maybe I wanted to have that say mascots instead of mascot. Um, just go in here and update it and hit save and it's updated. And then I can also delete tags as well. And you've noticed that it's updated in the tag manager. If I click back over here and if I selected all of these files, I could bulk tag them. And so one of the things that's nice about that, if you search your art um, and you have tags involved, you can just pull up all your files, it makes it super easy to notice how quick that is. So the ability to store your files in the cloud, you know, there's other cloud-based solutions, but none of them have the ability to attach this production data while also generating full screen previews. And if you want to see a really nice preview of an embroidery file, that's a really nice preview of an actual you know, applique file. That's a, actually a 3D rendering of the embroidered applique file. It looks pretty terrific. So the, the, the first functionality we're going to talk about is the My Art section. And that's where you can upload your own files in bulk. You can reorganize them into folders, subfolders. If I went into My Art and I wanted to download that whole folder, I could just click on it and download the whole folder as a zip file. So really great way to organize your files nice and safely and securely stored in the cloud. You run into problems with the computer, um, ransomware attack, all these kind of unpleasant things that happen to people that put their files in jeopardy. Um, you know with assurance that these files are sitting there nice and, and saved in the cloud. And anyone within your organization that has a login can access them. Now, the second part of the technology I'm going to talk about is stock art. I'm going to come back to art approvals here in a little bit, but I want to talk about stock art and why, that, why that's a big deal. When, when you look at the way artwork is handled in the personalization and apparel decoration industry, there's basically three kind of, I would call groups of artwork, the way artwork is handled. The first group is a common group. Everybody's involved in, in this at some level. I call that logos on stuff. That's your customer supplied artwork. Customer has their design. They come to you. You're operating almost like a service bureau and you're printing their artwork. Of course, we want that, that artwork or and we want that work because it's productive work, but it's very competitive. You know, typically the margins aren't going to be great on that. You're not supplying any of the creative um, input. So you're just basically operating as a, as almost like a contract printer. And so as a result of that, they can take that artwork to anyone. And with the age of the internet and people getting very savvy about doing direct importing deals, you know, via Alibaba and some of these other sources that are available, it's become harder to hang on to that artwork and or those jobs. And one of the things that's challenging about that is you get buyer turnover. So you're, embedded with this company, you're doing all their logo work and there's a new buyer that comes in and the new buyer's got other sources or they're doing direct importing from overseas. And all of a sudden we lose out of that business. So we, we certainly want that logo on stuff business because for a lot of our companies, it's foundational and it's kind of bread and butter, but we don't want that to be all of our business because if we do, then we have a concentration risk, right? So we lose a big account and we're like, oh man, that's a bummer. Those guys were 10% of our overall revenue. So that's that's one kind of quadrant of artwork. The other quadrant of artwork is what I call um, from the ground up custom. Not ground up custom, but it's from the ground up custom. The customer needs you to develop something completely unique to them. Um, sometimes they have a rough idea as to what they want. They might provide you with some level of source artwork. Maybe they've gone to Custom Inc. or one of these designer shirt type websites and they've designed something or they've tamed screen captures and they drop it off to you and they say, hey, um, I need you to do something like this. Well, here's the, here's the problem. There's a lot of problems with that type of work. Number one, that can be profitable if the order size is significant to cover the, the design and production costs, right? To do that kind of level of work on a small order or even a one-off, it's not practical to do that. Um, there's, a, there's certainly going to be a time frame involved in doing this. It was interesting. I was talking to a client a few weeks ago, and she was sharing with me that, you know, she she just sends her clients up to the internet to find something, and um, you know, they give her the source artwork, and she recreates. And I said, you know, how much time do you spend recreating that artwork? And she said, oh my gosh, you know, hours. And I go, it seems kind of dysfunctional. And I, and I said, you know, do you ever notice sometimes those people don't come back? And the reason those folks aren't coming back is, you know, when they were perusing all this artwork on the internet, um, they found another supplier who could just print it for them. So, and she was like, she kind of panicked a little bit and she's like, yeah, you know, I have kind of seen that. Um, so, you know, you know, being able to have a, you know, not every organization has the ability to have a creative department, 
And if you do, and you do have graphic designers on staff and you have the ability to do that, you still have to be self-aware of how much time is involved in these jobs, especially small jobs. So it's an important part of the business, but if you don't have some alternative to doing custom artwork um, for everybody, then you're just gonna get stuck doing it. And one of the things that was a little shocking that I heard last week from a client is not only do they design it, their salesperson designs the artwork, on one of these designer shirt websites, but they screen capture it and they vectorize that artwork and um, use it as is. And I, I told them, I said, you know, that's a really bad idea because you don't own the copyrights to that artwork. And some of these big companies, they throw their legal weight around and, you know, it's all fun and games till you get that cease and desist letter. So, you know, utilizing artwork from the internet that you don't know the origin of is, is generally, yeah, it's not a good business decision. And you're talking to someone that's been involved in some pretty, pretty heavy duty um, trademark and copyright lawsuits over the years. And believe me, you, you don't want to be in the middle of one of those. So knowing where your artwork comes from is very important. So we, we talked about logos on stuff, and then you got this custom artwork, then you got this middle ground. And this middle ground, that's where you make your profit. This middle ground is the, the you know, working with, you know, kind of semi-custom stock designs, being able to steer a client into a design, they give you creative input. You got you go and localize it for them. Maybe change the clip art, incorporate a logo, change colors, modify the font. And so instead of starting from scratch, you're starting from an idea and building from there. You have a much lower cost of development. It's much quicker. You're very much engaging your clients. You're not going and forcing them to go somewhere else to get design ideas you are giving them design ideas and directing them. This is the absolutely positively the most productive way to do business. And part of the reason I know that is before being involved in this company, we, were, we our family business was a company called Desert Sportswear. And we did about $15 million a year. We had 30 sales representatives in our entire business. We did everything humanly possible to not do from the ground up custom work. Um, we had a, a big art department. We would come up all these graphical concepts, templates, kind of like what you see here on your screen. And we'd steer our clients into those and then we'd just simply modify them. And so this was a, a the foundation of our business and people chose to purchase from us because guess what? We had all these great graphics and we could get these ideas customized for them very, very quickly. In today's day and age, we can do that via technology. We don't have to do that with manual production techniques. We can actually use technology to do that. And so this concept of stock designs is foundational um, to your business. So with that being said, let's let's talk about stock artwork for a second. Um, artwork, all artwork is not created equal. And here, here's here's what I mean by that. Number one, production readiness. If, if you have a graphics file and it's a vector-based file, you, that file has to be prepared a very specific way to output to your production equipment. Let me give you some for instances. This family reunion file right here. This is composed of vector artwork. These are actually live fonts. These are fonts right here. Um, the file is structured in Pantone spot colors. So it's already color separated for screen printing. There is not intersecting paths. If you wanted to modify this for vinyl, you could do that. If you had software that converts um, bitmap files to vector or uh, vector files into embroidery, you can convert it there. And also very easy to color correct this file for digital printing because it's set up in layers and you can simply change the colors in the design to match your desired output for digital printing. So production readiness is, is very, very important when you're looking at stock designs. Also, you know, is it relatable? Is the artwork relatable? Is it something that people look at and they recognize it as, hey, I've seen these kind of things in, um, you know, retail gift shops, or, you know, I was at the Four Seasons and I was in their resort wear store and I saw things that look like this, or I was watching, you know, college football game and I saw sideline apparel with graphics that look like this. Having artwork that's relatable is critically important. And so what we do when we do art development, and we've been doing that for over 32 years with our successor company, um, our, our, excuse me, our company um, Digital Art Solutions before we evolved into Graphics Flow, we're the company that invented the concept of production ready digital art for apparel decorators. Prior to you know, our company um, starting this, um, there, was, there was no such thing as clip art or design templates for screen printers or apparel decorators. We actually started that. So we've been building artwork um, for the last 32 years. And the, the whole concept behind building that artwork is creating artwork that's relatable. So that when you see a design like this, 
you're recognizing that look because it's that clean collegiate look that you're seeing from Adidas or Nike or Reebok or Under Armour. Um, when you're clicking on a design like this, it's one of those common patch type layouts that you're seeing at retail. So in, in our art development and in the artwork that we've incorporated into graphics flow, it's not theory, it's practice. Instead of having a, a big old screen printing business that had the ability to, um, you know, produce all this custom artwork, what we do instead is we have an art department that produces the artwork and so that more than one person can use it. It's not being used by a single company. It's being used by our end users. They're modifying and localizing the artwork for their own unique purposes. So that's how we do our creative artwork. And, you know, there's a whole process that we do um, when we develop artwork, we do a storyboard, we look at graphical trends, fonts, colors, all the things in that kind of nature, and we actually design into graphical trends, we design into color trends, um, we are a font foundry, so a lot of the kind of the common fonts that you'll see, industry standard apparel decoration fonts, those are our fonts. So having access to a massive library of stock designs is very important. And I want to kind of show you, you know, kind of how it works. Um, and how you locate designs and kind of some of the search capabilities. So first thing I want to do is kind of segment a little bit and talk about searching. In this particular um, um, setup right here, which is design ideas, which are live templates, these files are all set up for in three formats. Format number one is a PNG file. This is if you just want to have a high resolution file for viewing can't be edited in terms of the text or objects. It's just a static file, but looks great for viewing. And if you want to see what a PNG file looks like, that is it. That is the PNG file viewing in a web browser right there. High resolution, really crisp, looks great, awesome looking file. Then we also have the file format that is the CDR file format. So folks that are working with CorelDRAW file format, if they download the file, the font is actually embedded in the file, so you don't even have to have the font installed Installed for CDR. You can ungroup the file, change colors, edit the text, modify this, and localize it to whatever your need happens to be. And then the third type of file is an Adobe Illustrator file. And so if you're using an Adobe Illustrator workflow, you can download the AI file, uh, open it up in Illustrator, change the text to all of modifications, recoloring, and, and localize that file. A little bit different with Illustrator because in with Illustrator, we need to have the fonts installed on our system. Um, they're not embedded in the document. So what we do is this, if you go over here to fonts, once you're a Graphics Flow member, you go over here, you can download the entire font set. There's 374 fonts. If you were purchasing these fonts one at a time, you'd pay between 15 and $30 for font, per font for these fonts. Why is that important? because many of the industry standard fonts that you see for sports and collegiate and athletic, those are our fonts. Um, also, one of the things that we've been doing recently, if we've been doing a lot of fonts that are in that um, kind of home, I call it home decor, handwritten, scripty, more organic style fonts, like fonts like this. We've been doing many, many fonts in that genre because it's very, very popular in the home decor market. And it's kind of, it's, it's actually, you know, overlapped into apparel decoration, you know, cute little sayings with scripty fonts. Um, recently, we did a whole series of fonts that are geared towards um, the superheroes. And so we did, you know, things that look kind of like Marvel and, you know, DC comic type fonts. This is kind of a Guardians of the Galaxy-esque font or Iron Man or, or Captain America. But one of the things we're really well known for is our athletic fonts. And so fonts like our game day font, which is a, in for more or less a industry standard font these days. Um, these are these are fonts that you're going to see quite often at retail. And you start going through the DAS sports fonts like Game Day and our Sports Script. These are going to be very recognizable to you because many of the top retail brands in the United States of America and Canada are using our fonts. Very popular. So, long story short, guess what? You get the best library of industry specific apparel decoration and personalization fonts on the planet comes with your graphics flow clip art not all clip art is created equally so when we create clip art we same thing with the templates we make sure it's production ready it doesn't have intersecting paths excess drawing nodes the colors are grouped and layered it has pantone spot colors if you're going to print it we call this production readiness 
And we do this for two reasons. Reason number one is we don't wanna to have to teach you guys how to fix the artwork to make it work for your process. Um, that's number one, that's actually a really big deal. And number two, it lends a level of professionalism to the artwork. And so you know with confidence that if you pick any of these designs, you're not gonna to to do anything with it. It's just gonna work. And so when we design clip art, we design clip art that looks like it belongs on apparel or personalized products. These um, um, clip art images right here, these were images and design elements from our last graphics flow um, drop. And so these are the elements from our last drop of artwork, our monthly art drop. And these are the graphics elements, very searchable. If I came over here and I typed in the word football and I wanted to see football images, we can click on that and you're gonna have all your football images. Here's backgrounds in here. If you're doing sublimation or digital printing, um, industry standard type clip art, like our famous helmets, everybody uses our helmet designs. That's our world famous helmet. You've seen that probably before. That's a very popular image. Um, so you're getting the industry's premier collection of artwork. And one of the things that I really like about our clip art, and maybe I'm a little biased, but we hit those classic looks. Sometimes, you know, complex isn't necessarily what you're looking for. A classic look, to me, that's the perfect football for kind of a retro looking artwork or retro looking design. So we, we really try, and then here's a modern, another modern version of a helmet. You'll also notice variations single color for more like vinyl graphics or laser etching, two colors for simple screen print, um, and then full color for multicolor printing or digital output. And because of the way these files are constructed, they're very, very easy to edit and manipulate. So super searchable, you can either put in a keyword or you can just go down here into categories and select a specific category. Um, you know, maybe you wanted to do the, all the states from the US and you wanted to have um, you know, specific designs for that, you wanna go down here and turn off football if you're gonna do that. And you can just type in a keyword. If you're looking for flags, doesn't matter what it is, um, you can just find artwork super duper easy. Um, same thing is true of design ideas. But design ideas, it's a little bit different because there's, there's three basic ways to search through the design ideas in graphics flow. Way number one is simple keyword. If I wanted to come in here and let's say I wanted to type in, I needed artwork for family reunions, right? I could just go over here and click on family and any artwork that's tagged with family reunions is simply gonna come up in my search. So pretty easy, anything that's got the word family. Um, you'll also get in this case, you'll get family designs that were like sports family, you know, like Cougar family, things, things of that here you go, Broncos family. Um, if I type in reunion, I'm just gonna get reunion designs. So we're using a type of search, it's called elastic search. This is a very sophisticated search capability um, that is a wonderful piece of technology that gives you maximum flexibility, thus the word elastic, for searching for images. And you notice it's also super duper quick and you can do this on your phone. So think about it like this, you're sitting at your, your, you're at your grandkids, um, softball game and you're talking to the, the folks next to you and they're like, Hey, what do you do for a living? I says, well, I have an apparel decoration business. Oh, well, that's cool. Um, and you know, what, what do you guys do? Oh, we do screen printing and we do dye sublimation and we do some embroidery. Oh, you know what? We have uh, you know, we have our family reunion coming up here in a few weeks. And, um, I would like to, you know, you know, we got to get shirts together. I waited to the last minute. I really know what to do. He says, Hey, no problem. What's your email? Check this out. I just typed in reunion. I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna create an art approval. You ready? Art approval, this is the next piece of, tech, piece of technology. I'm gonna say create new. And we're gonna say Johnson Family Reunion Concepts. And I'm gonna take that individual and I'm gonna say, hey, what's your email again? I'm doing this on my phone, by the way. So we don't have to do it on your computer. And you can go, hey, Bob, what's your, what's your email? Oh, okay, yeah, all right. So. I'm subscribing, Bob, it's always Bob, right? Um, to this is, hey, here are some design concepts. Just make a comment on any design you would like us to mock up. I'm doing this on my phone, we're right there live. So I just sent Bob an invite to this custom web page we created. Here's a here's just a link. If I just want to put this in a link, I can do that and put it into you know Facebook or an email. The difference is if I use just this link, there's no commenting. 
because I set Bob up as an approver or a commenter, either one, Bob can communicate with, with me on any of these graphics. So Bob's going to get an email. Bob's going to be clicking on the email and he's going to be looking at art. So where does this art going to come from? It comes from a couple places. So number one, I can just go to stock art and I can just type in the word reunion, right? And we can pick out our, our top design. So let's see, let's pick out this one, this one. These are all good. I like all these. I don't know. It's kind of tough picking them out. So we'll pick out these right here. And I like that one there. So we'll add those. Boom. So those are there. Okay. So Bob, Bob refreshes his browser. He's looking at that. Um, maybe I want to change the background color here. Guess what? Right over here. Click on that. Go to the details mode. You know, you can put in a, you know, a production process or whatever. But what I am going to do is I'm going to change the background color. So we're just going to go over here. Go to color. I'm going to do kind of a maybe like a pale yellow. So we'll kind of get it in that pale yellow mode. Um, if I have Pantone colors or RGB values or hex values, I can do that as well. So let's go ahead and change that. That's instantly updated. If Bob goes in and makes a comment on this file, I'm instantly notified in two places. Number one, in the app itself. Just remember, we're doing this on our phone. And I'm also sent an email. If I comment back to Bob, Bob is notified in the app himself. And he's also notified via email. So I can put any kind of instructions in here. If I want to put pricing in here, um, you know, I could put in, you know, this has been a very popular look this year. Um, you put anything in there that you want. And so Bob sees the design. Um, maybe he has a request to make some changes. You know, maybe, hey, can we do like red, white, and blue colors? Can we, you know, make it like a patriotic theme? Our event is over the fourth, kind of getting down to the wire there, right? Um, this is called artwork collaboration. And we'll do one other thing too. We talked about getting the artwork from a stock design, but let's do something else here. Let's go and take up, maybe we have a showcase that we've created, some family reunion designs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to my art, and I've got some family re reunion designs that I've created. Let's see here. Here's one I actually put on a shirt and we'll go and we'll add those too. So we just added those designs to our art approval. And when we add those designs, boom, there you go. Same exact concept. So I'm combining a combination of my artwork. This one's actually embroidery. I'm combining a combination of my art with designs I curated from the stock collections. So, and if you have your own stock designs that you've created, maybe you have your own family reunion templates, guess what you can do? You can add those into the platform as well. And so you can just do a bulk upload into my art and you got all your artwork up there as well. So this is how we get ideas in front of customers. Why is this important? What do people need right now? People need more customers. One of the things that we've seen that's occurred in the marketplace, which is really, really important, is a year ago, if you look at consumer habits pre-pandemic, right? Folks, let's say we'll make the age cutoff 35 years and younger. 35 year and younger folks, you know, they're quite comfortable purchasing online. And that's quite honestly, that's the preferred method, uh, method of commerce for younger people. When the pandemic hit, all of a sudden, out of necessity, folks that were ne not necessarily, you know, big online purchasers of things like groceries, you know, maybe they were doing Amazon, but like groceries or wearables, you know, all of a sudden they were forced to do online purchasing. And one of the things that they discovered is they actually liked it. And so right now, what, you know, with, with e-commerce and technology, you know, really, you know, taking over and with the labor shortage that we're experiencing in the U.S. right now, um, and people are starting to get busy again, we have to utilize technology to be more efficient. We have to use technology to get ideas in front of the customer. And what we want to do with them is we want to be collaborating with that end user. We don't want them going over to a design a shirt um, website, you know, like custom ink and design because you know we're not going to get them back. So what we want to do is we got we want to get them hooked on our artwork. So they're coming back to us. They have to comment to get something you know modified and changed. We want to interact with them. And that's what, that's what makes, you know, that creates that bond between our customer and us that keeps them buying from us. And so what we're doing is we're positioning ourselves as a creative resource for them. And we don't want to be lazy. We don't want to say, hey, you know, just go and design, you know, 
we don't want to do that. We want them to, to interact with us. Hey, I like this design, but you know, we, I'd like to do a darker color shirt because you know we're kind of messy and we're going to spill pizza on that. You know, it's a barbecue. You're going to barbecue sauce all over. Can you do the shirt in like navy blue? Sure. You know, you're just doing an exchange of comments here. Um, the other thing that's really nice, you can add multiple people to the art approval. Um, and you can also add people that can't comment. You can just use the sharing link when they can't comment. So good example of that, you're dealing with the booster club and there's two decision makers, add them as commenters, add the, the big boss as an approver, add the small boss as a commenter, and then just use this link to everyone else that's in the, in the organization that you don't wanna have comment. Um, and you're, believe me, you're, you're doing them a favor, right? Um, so art approvals is a very powerful tool for sales enablement. And so sales enablement means laying the foundation that's going to enable you to attract new customers. So literally, I, I did this with a customer this morning. I do it every day. If you want to see what I do when I'm, I'm doing demos with customers, I will just ask them, hey, what do you do? What are you up to? What's the last graphic that you did? And I will go in and just create an art approval. Literally takes me 15 seconds add some designs, add them to the art approval, say, check your email. And they're like, you gotta be kidding me. This is a, a groundbreaking technology. And not only are they seeing the graphic, but they're seeing a, a good quality graphic. I'm not putting a watermark on this design because they can't use it anyways. It doesn't say the name of their organization anywhere. So I'm not worried about them copying the design. Now, on the other hand, if I do a personalized version of the design that is got their information, what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to watermark it. And so I'm just going to click on the graphic and I'm going to go over here and say, Hey, you know what? Let, let's go ahead and drop a watermark on there and let's make it a text-based watermark. And that watermark might look better as a dark combination, or we can try light see which one looks a little bit better. I think I'm going to like the light one better. Like, yeah, I think the light one's not as obtrusive. And so they're going to have a really hard time stealing that graphic because of the fact that, you know, we have that watermark on there. So that's just a really good security measure. And you'll notice if I go to team settings here, um, I can upload my logo. So it's branding my logo onto my art approvals, but I can also customize my watermark. So I added the words copyright 2021. I made it a little bit more opaque and a little bit bigger, so kind of a bolder watermark. I've also added all of my policies and disclaimers. So when they approve this, they have to click through a disclaimer that says, hey, basically the colors in this design are gonna look different than the final output. And by approving, you are acknowledging the fact that you waive any claim of dissatisfaction due to color. So you can add your own approvals in here as well. So art approvals is a huge, huge, big deal, not only for getting an approval from your client, but also for being able to um, utilize this as a sales enablement tool. So let me kind of show you the workflow on a, like a, just a simple art approval. And we're actually gonna create a project real quick and we'll just show you the kind of the whole kind of um, workflow of how this would go down. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go and select a design. So we're gonna go in here and we're just gonna select design. And then on that design, we're gonna actually go in and localize it. So we can do our little Grizzlies design here and we're, we're gonna jazz it up a little bit. So I'm gonna click on our Grizzlies design here and I'm gonna download it in two formats. I'm gonna download it as an Illustrator file. And I'm just gonna put that up on my desktop and we'll call that Grizzly. Concept, probably wanna spell it right. Probably doesn't really make any difference. So I'm gonna put that up on my desktop for now, save it there. And then I'm also gonna download the CDR version of the file. The CDR version of the file, I'm gonna put it in a different location. And I'm actually gonna store it in my templates folder. I've got a little folder called templates and I have all my graphics flow downloads in here. And there's all the files I've been downloading and we're just gonna save it in there. Okay, so same file two versions, we've got it downloaded. Then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna boogie down here to Adobe Illustrator and I'm just gonna go over here to open and I'll just cruise up over here to my desktop and we've got the Grizzly concept here. We're gonna click on open and the file is gonna open up and it's just, it's a live file, it's editable. I can just go over here. If I wanna click on the word Grizzlies and 
type in whatever I want it to say. You know, I want to say bears in there. You know, we can resize it. We can change colors. We can do all those kind of fun type things that we can do with the graphics file. It's live text. We can delete the, the clip art. We can change it. It's kind of a boring design, but sometimes boring is good. And that clean athletic look is really popular right now. But we're going to take a, a little bit different stab at the design. And we're going to utilize some uh, kind of supplementary software. Uh, this is a program called Smart Designer. This is a very famous program in our industry, which is an add-on software to CorelDRAW. And people ask me this all the time. They say, hey, why can't we do this in Illustrator? It's very simple. The Illustrator doesn't have the underlying architecture to do this third-party add-on software. And so we tell our clients quite simply, hey, if you're comfortable working within an Illustrator workflow and using traditional design methods to edit and manipulate your files, hey, cool, That'll, that's gonna work great. But there is another way of doing it. And let me, let me show you how we're gonna do it over here. I have CorelDRAW 2021 open. I have this Smart Designer software over here. And we're gonna come over here and I downloaded it into the graphics browser. And so, because I downloaded it into the graphics browser, all I really have to do to change, you know, to go and access the file is just go into my art files and just click on it. And when that file opens up, boom, there it is. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the text. I like the we are, I think it's kind of cool, but we're gonna change this to DM right here, DM. And we're going to change this to HS. And we're going to put a few spaces in there. Looks pretty good. And then Grizzlies, we're going to change that to Cougars. Okay, Cougars. All right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to modify this a little bit. So what we're going to do is we are going to take the Cougar here, or the Bear here, and we're going to put a Cougar in there. So all I need to do, it's a progression. This is Smart Designer. I'll just say Change Art. And we're going to say, hey, let's select New Art. Browser is going to come back up. I can go back up to Graphics Flow and download a Cougar, or I can go into the Clipart browser. I've already downloaded some files here, so let's see. I think I've got a. I think I downloaded a Cougar the other day. Well, we'll download a Cougar real quick. Let's do that. So let's go and download a Cougar from Graphics Flow. So I'll go to Clipart. We'll type in Cougar. And we'll find a, the file that we want. Let's see here. We'll click on this guy right here. And we're gonna download that file. And we're gonna download it to my clip art folder. Right here. And we're just gonna call it, oh, we just leave it the, the same way name. Don't really need to rename it. And let's go over here. And all we're going to do is just double click on it. And then it's just going to pop into the template. Now, typical art production type stuff. Okay. When, when we have files that have, you know, multiple colors, what we have is we actually have a mismatch of colors here. I'm going to make the cougar a little bit bigger. Okay. So we actually have a mismatch of colors. And when you, when you get a mismatch of colors, one of the, the challenges that you have is like color consolidation, all that kind of stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cheat. I can't go in and just manually start recoloring this. There's no reason I can't do that, but we're gonna cheat a little bit. And so we're gonna go over here and we're gonna use some tools. Over here, we're gonna say, edit colors. Here's all the colors in the design. They're gonna be displayed. And maybe we just wanna you know use the original two colors and just do a color reduction. So I just use the original two colors and I'm going to go over here and, and describe my dropper. We're going to sample these colors and we'll just pop those in here. So we got that local localized and eh, I like it. Looks good. And by the way, these blue shades, these are, these are shades of the blue. So it's, this actually is just a two color design. You can tell that just by turning off the tints. See, it's a two color design. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and we're going to click on the little blue color here and we're gonna swap this out and so by unchecking this box when i change this to say purple it's going to change all the variations and shades of the design to purple shades as well and then over here on the green we're going to make that kind of a you know maybe like pantone 123 hey let's do it type in 123 pantone hit apply and we've got it localized 
um, from this point on, um, maybe we want to take DMHS and maybe, I don't know, let's see here. Let's break that into individual letters. So let's go, we're going to remove the little transformation on there and then we're going to break it into individual groups. And so I'm just going to slide that over and then we're going to slide that over. But, you know, we, you know, we need to, we need to give a little bit of pizzazz to this file and, and that's going to be based on my process, right? So right now, if we're thinking heat transfer, um, if we're thinking heat transfer, maybe we're just going to do heat transfer. If we're thinking screen printing, this is already color separated for screen printing. So that's cool. I don't have to do anything, but maybe we want to change the font on this. So maybe use that game day font. That's kind of a cool, basic collegiate font. So we're going to use game day in there. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a text effect. We're really going to bring this design to life. So you ready? So what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and we're going to go to effects. And these are the typical type things that graphic designers do. And we're going to click on Cougars. And we're going to say, hey, you know what? Let's do kind of a little reverse arc thing on here. So let's do kind of a little reverse arc there. So we'll dip that down. That's smart designer stuff. And maybe move that up a little bit. And then we're going to add a text effect to that. So let's go over here to outline effects and say, hey, let's do an effect for, you know, kind of a cutting type of effect for vinyl. And let's knock the, the shirt color through. And let's, let's see what it looks like. Yeah, it looks pretty good, but I think I want it to be thicker. So let's go over here and kind of double the thickness of these lines. So this is all automation. So all of this stuff is automation. And what I'm going to do is just going to grab the dropper and we're going to make out the same yellow. And yeah, I like it. it looks cool. So simple design, really clean. Love it. Let's see what it looks like on a shirt. So what most people are going to do is they're going to import a file that is like a, a product rendering or a photo and then mock it up. I'm going to do that automatically. I'm going to use automation to do that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to virtual samples and smart designer. I'm going to click on virtual samples. And then what I'm going to do, actually, before I do that, I'm going to make a, we're going to make a weathered effect out of this. Why not? And so let's go and set up our weathered effect. We're going to put it on this tank top right here. So we're going to select that object right there. It actually works really nice on a tank top. Okay. Looking good. Move it up just a little bit and let's add a weathered effect. So I'm just going to click on the little weathered effect feature here and we're going to sample the shirt color. So the, the weathered effect is going to be the color of the shirt. And then what we're going to do is just add an effect, see if we like it. I think it looks pretty good. Yep. Happy there. So we're done. And so at this point, um, you know, basically I'm taking it back up to graphics flow. This is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to save all the art assets. We're going to save all the art assets and we're going to reload to graphics flow. So I've got a little folder here. I call Cougars. I've been adding all kinds of fun, fun stuff in here. So we'll call this DMHS Cougars. And we're going to pop that in there. And so we'll call this DMHS Cougars. And we'll just save that file. I'm also going to save, I can save a PNG version of it as well. So we're going to go down here and we're going to save a PNG version for web. So it looks awesome in the cloud. So we'll just save that as a PNG. Um, I'm going to choose a transparent background so I can change the background color and graphics flow. Boom. Done that. I'm going to take this. We're going to save this as the concept file. And so right here, DMH Cougars concept. And then we're going to save a PNG for that as well. We'll save that and boom, here we go. Now, one last thing, color separations. This is already color separated. So it's pretty easy to work with. If I was going to print film, I could do that right in the smart designer program. Cause all I'd have to do is just go down here to print separations, click on color separations. Um, there's half tones in here. So I'm going to go to the half tone wizard and we're going to check these half tones right here and we're going to apply our postscript settings. So this is going to print out the correct dot frequency and angle for my half tone dots. If I have a film printer, uh, I'm going to come over here. We're going to separate the colors real quick with the half tones. So we're going to do color separations on that real quick. So I have my films for my screen printer or if we're sending out to have transfers made, that's all handled for me. And there you 
there you go, including my halftones. And then I'm gonna add my set mark. Well, let's flash base it real quick. So we're gonna go and flash base that real quick. And it's gonna ignore the flash under the dark purple because you don't need it. And then we'll just add separation marks. So everything we do is automated. So we'll just go over here to separation marks, click on the set marks, spit it out to film. Don't print page one, you're gonna print out the other pages. You can turn all this stuff off too. That's it, okay, so back to graphics flow. So coming back to graphics flow, ready? We're gonna create a new folder under my art. We're gonna call that folder DMHS Cougars. DMHS Cougars, okay. We are going to bulk upload the graphics that we created in that folder. We're just gonna bulk upload them. So we're just gonna go to upload. We're gonna go in that folder and we're just gonna select them all Boom, upload them. So it's gonna create the previews for the CDR files. Um, the preview is already built into the PNG file. So here's our production file right here. This is the file that art department, they can download. And I could subscribe them to this art approval so they know where the artwork is. I can make any comments. And I'm gonna say, hey, this is gonna be a two color with half tones. You can put your, your Pantone colors in here. This is gonna be a screen print. Um, the max dimension is gonna be 10.5 and the width dimension. You know, you can put any of your Pantone colors in here if you want to. Um, any of the data that you're gonna need for production on this file. If you know the RGB values for the Pantone color, you could just add that right in there. Okay. so. All the production data is right here. Any kind of instructions for the art department are right here. You can subscribe them to the art approval. Then just go down and download the art, the art in the back, you know, back room, and and just automatically start editing it or printing film. Okay, but we still have to get the customer to sign off. So what we're going to do is we're just going to create an art approval. We're going to say art approval, and we're just going to say DMHS concepts, DMHS concepts. And we're gonna add the buyer's name to the art approval. There we go. Any kind of note, this is the body of your email. So if you wanna say hi, and I'll just put a little note, just click on approve to initiate production. Boom, so he's gonna get an email. I'm gonna add the art from my art. And the only ones I'm adding are the two PNG files. Boom, add them. Don't need the CDR files in there. I'm gonna put the graphic above. So I'm gonna move that up here. I'm gonna put it on a different background color. So let's go and add a background color to that bad boy. So we're gonna add that gray background, there you go. Let's go ahead and add a, a watermark. I'll do a watermark. I don't know if we want to do the light one or the dark one. Let's see what looks better. Probably the light one, I'm thinking. That's dark. And that's I think light looks a little bit better. Okay, yeah, it looks good. So why am I putting the watermark on here? Because I don't want them to uh, I don't want them to be able to, to copy the file. It's print ready. This is a print resolution file. I'm not worried about the watermark here because this is a lower resolution file. So there you go. Um, so let's go check my email real quick. So I'm gonna check my email. I got pinged on a little email here. And this is how the whole process goes right here. Uh oh. So 
So here's my art approval right here. Boom. There's the approval. I can look at it. I can comment. Oop, that's the wrong. Uh, I sent the wrong approval. Ha ha. Hold on. That's the wrong one. Did I add Craig to this one? Let's see. Let's see here. Art approval. Oh, there's two of them in here. So there's that one. That's the Johnson one. Yeah, here's the one I'm interested in. DMHS right here. All right. There it is. And so now I'm looking at it. I'm like, hey, you know what? Looks great. Perfect. Looks great. Just want to make sure, sure this is Oxford Gray. Perfect. As soon as they hit send, I get emailed and noticed in the, notified in the app. They want to go and sign off on it. Real simple. Approve. And once they approve the file, they click on the second one, I'm gonna get a notification. I've got to click through a disclaimer. So we've gone ahead and already approved this. Actually, I'm logged into my account. Right now I approved it from my own account. So we approved it, go back to the app and all the data for that particular job is gonna be sitting right over here. It's gonna say, hey, I've got an approved art approval. Okay, let's see what's going on here. So we've got an approved art approval right here. And let's see the notes. If there's any, oh, there's a note. What's the note say? It says, looks great. Just wanna make sure this is Oxford. Yep. Yes, this will be Oxford Gray. And they are immediately notified. They come back after me later and they said, hey, listen, um, you know, this isn't what I ordered. And you're like, well, you know, you signed off on it on this email, signed off at it on this date at this time. And so now we can begin production. We're ready to begin production. So I'm gonna take this one right here and I'm gonna move it to my archive that art approval, I'm gonna move it to my archive. Here's all my archived approvals. I can come back anytime I want, pretty easy. Um, go ahead and send a little note to production to have them start the films, all that. That's that's the basic workflow. So the, the concept of graphics flow is art collaboration. It's uh, creating the, the bridge between the sales, the design and the production. So it's all smooth, it's all connected. That's the entire concept behind the software. And the neatest part is you get new artwork every single month. So as a graphics flow member, every single month, we initiate new artwork into the system. That artwork not only is um, um, displayed in the system, there's also graphical catalogs that go along with that artwork. And so you can actually submit that artwork to your client as a graphics catalog. So we'll go down here. Yeah, I'll show you something pretty neat. Here we go. So these are digital versions of the new artwork that's submitted in graphics flow every single month right here. And you can actually go in and embed those into your website as well. So what are some of the things that people are doing with the artwork and graphics flow? People are doing a, a multitude of things and they'll take the artwork and graphics flow and they'll actually utilize it to populate web stores. So here is a web store that was created um, in the Inksoft platform, our sister company right here. There's a web store that we use with artwork from Graphics Flow, and we just used it to populate a web store. Um, they will take the artwork from Graphics Flow and embed these catalogs right directly into their website. I'll show you a great example of that. Go to bmtpromotions.com, their homepage. 
And here is the catalogs that they've embedded right into their web song, website, along with an art collection form. These are catalogs from Graphics Flow right here. And they've embedded those catalogs right directly into their website. So the, the, the most important thing with Graphics Flow is to understand that it, it's, it's helping you to enable you graphically so you can be sales enabled. So you can utilize your most powerful sales tool, graphics, to retain customers and for new client acquisition. That's the whole concept. It's not like a, you know, a substitute for, you know, Google Drive or, you know, uh, Dropbox. It does have that capability and it's industry specific and you can generate file previews and attach production data. But as a sales enablement tool, it's unsurpassed in the industry. And what everyone needs right now is new customers. And this is a very novel and efficient way to get ideas in front of your customers, engage them graphically, build loyalty, getting them reliant on you in terms of a creative resource so that you're growing your business with your existing customers and you're also getting a new business from uh, uh, prospective customers. That's the whole concept. So I'm going to go ahead and um, stop the screen share right now. And I'm going to end the live portion of the webcast and I can answer any questions that you might have.